So, Terry, thank you for, ever so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to talk to you again. We've uh, so we worked together many, many years ago, but you are now a producer, um, so which is great. This book, The Stranger in Our Bed, how did that come to you in the first place? Well, we launched the company and I wanted to have something that had an existing IP. I think it's really difficult to even get a film into production. So you need as many legs up the ladder as you can get. And so I actually direct messaged a few people on my social media and the lovely Fraser Hines, um, who your, your um, audience will probably know from Emmerdale came back to me and went, oh, it's really funny you should say that because one of my friends is a writer. And I was specifically looking for psychological thriller um, because I think it, it's definitely a, a genre that, that's popular. And so he put me in touch with Samantha Howell and we had a chat and, and the rest is history, as they say. So I sometimes serendipity just really works, doesn't it? <laughs> well, um the book, uh, as I understand it, the book came out in February 2020 and you're in, in production by the end of the year. That's that's a pretty swift uh, turnaround. Um, yeah. Did that cause any sort of uh, uh, problems with such an impressed time scale? Uh, well, me, myself and my business partner, um, Greg Barrow, we, we're not we're not people that like, like moss together under our feet. <laughs> and actually, I think even her agent and the lawyers were a bit like, oh, you know, this normally takes much longer. You're not going to be in production. And we were like, no, we will. So from from signing the deal to actually getting on set, I think it was 10 weeks, 10 weeks. Wow. So. She'd done the screenplay. We'd gone through lots of different, um, you know, drafts of it. Uh, and yeah, then we were in production. But I think we, with Sam worked very quickly, one thing. She also had already done the book. So she'd kind of plotted things out. But of course, the book's 350 odd pages and a screenplay needs to be between 90 and 120. So we had to really work out what we were going to take from the book because we were both very conscious to be loyal to the the audience of the book but of course we didn't really have the time to kind of sell the moments like you did in a book uh, and a, a film audience or a tv audience you know they, they want things to happen a lot lot quicker so we added a few little bits in there that aren't in the book but certainly uh, and, and I was nervous because I think audiences and loyalty to books, particularly books that are successful, and this is a USA Today bestselling book, um, they can be quite territorial if you, you know, you change things too much. So I was really nervous, but we were really lucky that we premiered on, um, on Showtime in America, and we were all kind of sitting there with bated breath, but the, the, they've been amazing. The reviews have been amazing. Um, you know, it's a proper chick flick with, all the things that you want in 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 that and you know the guys are kind of watching it with one eye thinking this is not what I would choose but they enjoy it <laughs> so as you say Samantha Lee Howe uh, is the author of the book um mm. but she's also written the screenplay now it's uh it's quite a different discipline uh, yes. from writing a novel to writing a screenplay and the only equivalent I can think of that is someone like Alex Garland so um it, was it was it this something of a risk? Um, were there? Uh, I mean, you've, you have touched on this. Was she quite protective of his story? Were there rewrites? Mm -hmm. Were there aspects of the story that you had to had to drop? Um, I don't think so. I, I guess it depends on the personality, doesn't it? And I I think Sam and I got the measure of each other quite quickly. And I think when you're in a process like this you just need to really respect each other's position and viewpoint and know when to push and pull. And I think Sam fought her corner when she felt that it was really important. And I fought mine when I felt that was important. And we brought Giles Alderson on, who is the director, because he's also had quite a lot of writing experience. And he really helped um, in a collaborative way to get the, get the essence of the important parts of the story into a screenplay that he felt that he could visually make work. So Sam did a great job and was really on board with all the notes that Giles and I threw at her. So I think we were really lucky to be working with somebody that's as flexible and quick as Sam. I don't think other authors would probably have given us the same kind of um, 
uh, I'm trying to be polite because I don't want to, you know, I think people are quite wedded to the story that they write. And I understand that. And so was Sam, but she was also very flexible. Is that diplomatic? <laughs> that is, yeah, very diplomatic, Terry. So um, your lead actors, they're, they're both great. Uh, Emily Barrington, Ben Lloyd Hughes, uh, they are great in the roles. Uh, um, but I only comparatively recently found out that they are in real life, a real life couple. Um, yeah. What was the, uh, but I understand there were a couple of reasons behind them being cast uh, as the couple. Mm. Well, first of all, we shot this when we were in lockdown. Um, which was good and bad uh, for very different things. So trying to keep a crew in a bubble, I think, is really quite difficult. But we were kind of looking for actors. And I've always loved Emily from Humans. I'm a massive Humans fan and I'm a Divergent fan. So I loved them before they even passed over our desk. And then we kind of kept coming back to them. You know, we were looking at other people and then kind of coming back to Emily and Ben and go, do we do that? Is that a bit weird? Or um, So I think once we actually discussed it and then we were obviously in, in COVID and there was certain COVID elements that suited us because they were a married couple. Um, but no, it worked really, really well, really well. And they were an absolute delight to work with. They're so talented individually and together. I think they really brought something special to that relationship. I can imagine it being uh, not the easiest of roles to play where on screen they're kind of suspicious and they're angry and they're, you know, everything that goes on within that film, kind of a, between a, um, a couple who are, not everything's right there. And then going home to work and saying, oh, how was work today, love? <laughs> Do you know what? They were brilliant at, Simon, because when, when we were shooting the first half of the film, we all lived in the manor house um, because everybody had to stay in the bubble. They were absolutely brilliant at being Charlotte and Tom and Ben and Emily. And they two were very, very separate. The, you know, when they were on set, they were like two actors. And obviously they probably had a shorthand in terms of, you know, sometimes from an acting point of view, it takes you a while to get to know your co-star and, and create that shorthand, which they had straight away. But they were very separate and they took the roles as any actor would really, really seriously. And I think it really played into, I mean, Ben, is really quite menacing in this film. Yeah. And Emily is, is quite fabulous as they both are. So no, I, I was really impressed at the way that they approached the role because you, you don't know. And, you know, they had some tricky scenes in the shower, which you know, I don't really know to this day how they managed to take off the Ben and Emily hat, but it was brilliant. It was all brilliant. It was a really good experience for me as a producer as well. I would definitely do it again. I would definitely, really actively um, look for that kind of combination or people that know each other really well or because I do think you get something a little bit special. So you mentioned that you're producing. Uh, this is your second feature film as a producer. Uh, you're nearly right. It's my second through... This is my second, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm, I've am i just finished third as well. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna say, I know no, you're no, really no. on it. Sorry, but... <laughs> I've got it wrong, you're right. <laughs> so, uh, as I say, so uh, in terms of having come off your first one as a feature and then moving on to this one as your second, uh, what sort of, um, uh, I can imagine this is a steep learning curve. Uh, and I wonder what you kind of bought from the first one that you thought, right, I mustn't do that for this second one. Uh, the first one, I just completely felt like I had imposter syndrome. I just kind of was going, I'm one of the producers <laughs> like that. Whereas I think because this was through my I, I, my own company, Buffalo Jack, I think um, there was just much more ownership of it. I'd found Sam, I'd found the script, I'd worked together on the script, I'd worked together with Giles. I just felt like it was much more my baby. And because I'd really gone through those very formative stages when I was on set I just felt like I knew the project so much more and actually note to self as a producer I will always really want to be involved in those formative stages because there's nothing more terrifying than when you know everything's up against you and somebody asks you a really important question and you don't know the answer and so for me as a producer I, I do like to be actively involved in all of that pre-pre-production uh, and even before that because you kind of, you've put this jigsaw together. So it just means that then any any element of that jigsaw, you do understand the mechanics of it. So 
it makes me a better producer, I think. But, you know, maybe the crew will tell you something <laughs> different. Well, finally then, Terry, as I say, you've moved into producing now, but you've been acting for uh, a long, long time, you know, mm. uh, and, and a long time. I, and we ask uh, all actors this. Uh, in retrospect, as you look back at the acting side, uh, which you still do, obviously, are there is there a role or roles that you have turned down and later you thought, why did I turn that down? I should have taken that role. No, but on the reverse, there's roles that I've taken that I shouldn't have. Oh, so, right. Yeah, I think the, the one thing I've taken from this journey so far and that I would tell any young actor be careful what you say yes to, because once it's out there, once it's on your IMDb or once it's out into the world, people do judge you on that. And the temptation is, as a young actor, is you just want to be on set because that's why we do it. We love acting and creating. And, you know, I would have definitely have not done quite a few of the roles that I did. But go, I am go on then. <laughs> which ones? Pardon? Which, which ones? None of the ones that you probably know, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You, you can't live in regret because we are the people we are now because of the journeys that we've taken. So that's just something I wish I'd have been a bit more mindful in the journey. And if you look at all the great actors that have had really illustrious careers, they've been very well planned in terms of the projects that they've chosen and why they've chosen them. So I think there's real strength in saying no. Great. Thank you for your time, Terry. Um, I, I, I like Lovely the film. to see you again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I say, it, uh, all these years. And, uh, and actually, you only lived up the road from me. And I, I know. Anyway. <laughs> well, I hope we get to speak to each other again. Well, I'm sure we will, because if your next film's uh, in the can, yes. Yes, um, yes, then yes. Um, we will chat about it and I will I will contact you. Oh, it's <laughs> Good to see you again, Simon, after all this time and, and have a lovely weekend. And you, Terry. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye, darling. Bye I'll now. let him. Thank you.